Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at uh, how to access and uh, process files, uh, mainly the direct access files. Okay. In the last tutorial we saw, we saw uh, relatively a long, a long video lecture on how to access and work with sequential files. We will be looking at direct files today. Okay. We will be using the same kind of example same exam that we used last time today uh, in this tutorial as well okay same as same as last time getting the roll number name and the grades of subjects of students okay now this is simple uh, we get the student name the roll number grades and stuff okay these are just some processing variables that's it and this is where the importance comes in we're opening a file called a stud stud underscore rec dot txt okay unit number is given by u which is 10 okay access this access keyword is mandatory because last time when we when we were working with the sequential code okay if you guys can remember okay uh, the default value of access parameter is sequential so this has to be mandatory made to be direct so this access keyword is mandatory and then recall should be given as 43 recall is Recal or uh, RECL is actually the maximum record length. Okay, this has to be compulsorily. This must be compulsorily present if you are uh, working with, uh, uh, say, uh, direct files. So the Recal is 43. I'll explain you guys how this number 43 came up with. I'll explain you guys a little later. So IO stat as we saw earlier. Status as we saw earlier. Okay, form. Okay, this form has to be formatted. Now, last time we didn't include form, but here form is mandatory. See, okay, if you guys, if you guys can look at it, okay, since the file is a direct access file, the access, recall, and form, okay, the form, the okay, so I'll, I'll make a correction here. The form parameter, the form, okay, the form, uh, uh, access access and uh, recall okay um recall uh, parameters okay are are necessary compulsory in this open statement okay because uh, all, not only that because of this format okay uh, we are also using a format here so the because of which this is necessary this is necessary and this is necessary okay now let's see about how this number 43 comes into picture um, see the name is 25 letters so uh, in, in when you're typing it in the file you log away 25 ca 25 spaces so that's 25 okay we are giving four un four units of space for the roll number that's four okay followed and then two uh, four units of space for both the sub uh, for every grade mark so you have two twice ta two two times of four so what you have is that 25 okay plus this four 29 plus this eight 37 okay uh, yeah 37 and then uh, between roll number and the name you're giving three spaces that's 40 so three units of 40 and then between name and the first of the two numbers the two grades we're giving three spaces so that's another three so 43 so if you guys notice this 43 is nothing but the total width of all the value total formatting width specified in the format statement so that will be the uh, within this length okay uh, your all your record for that group is written so that's why this record length or recall for this file uh, for any group is 43 okay now if you change the formatting parameter adjust, if you just change the formatting in a different manner then the record length will change accordingly and you have to adjust accordingly okay and ignore this 20 format for now it's not it's not important okay what we have here is that uh, we, uh, we get the total number of entries and then using the do loop we and get the value of roll number student name and then grades and we are writing it in the in the file now here in the file to indicate that the indicate that the key value for that for every data group okay 
we we use this keyword called as rec okay just like we saw last time okay i think it's better if i show you guys the whole file uh, open recent uh, files one yeah so if you guys notice this is the last uh, this is the program we saw last time okay so if you guys notice access gives has two single uh, sequential direct by default the sequential but since we are using uh, direct file you have to give access is mandatory recall is compulsory with direct access files so that's that's it and then format or form is by default it is formatted but it's but it's better to you know write it write it in specific write it uh, by default over here that's not a problem okay and then for the write statement write statement uh, the keyword rec is actually used for you know uh, used used for indicating the key of the data group okay this data that we are going to use as rec will be the data that is used for differentiating the different groups so okay this is this will act as the roll number kind of a thing that differentiates the different data sets or something of that sort okay and then this is compulsory for direct access direct uh, access files so here okay because of this while writing it okay we uh, to indicate that uh, when we are writing this entire data set data group whichever you call it okay uh, this roll num roll number or start name or grace either one of them have to be a record length okay now i said roll to be record length and keeping it uniform so that you know uh, accessing is easy and then what i do is that i close it so far uh, the writing right the manner in which you write the data to the file is looks similar to that of sequential files yes now here comes the magic of uh, direct access files suppose if i want to write if i want to you know uh, read them it's direct it's very simple okay i close the file here okay I open the file here set the format here write uh, get the data from the user and write them in this do write them in the file using this uh, do loop okay and then close the file over here and then here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to ch open uh, i mean access the direct access the file data which has this value rno equals 10 directly now how do i do that it's simple open the file but this time the access is direct but the status is old here if you see the sta uh, status is replaced okay if the file is present it will be replaced here the file should not be replaced it should be used as it is so i'm using this status old okay old okay and then i'm reading the statement and how do i read it while reading it i give the unit format and all that's okay but i'm adding another key another extra parameter called as rec equals rno which is exactly similar exactly the same as that of the rec statement used in this write statement write the statement over here now what this does is that uh, in here uh, instead of searching sequentially all the values what this uh, what this keyword does is that it just goes direct it just goes into the file searches for the you know record key uh, which are record key or the key value which is equal to that which has the same value as that of r and o and directly fetches the data within a very short time and brings it back okay so if so the, what happens is that that's it you don't need a do loop and stuff unlike you don't need a do loop and stuff like here okay uh, this is the you know last uh, pro program we wrote last time unlike here wherein we just have to set this in a do loop and extract one data after the other and then finally get the nth data instead of like that you just it there's not even an iteration it's a direct access and you get the data and using this state using this if construct okay we're checking we're cross verifying that these are the same and then you're printing it that's it and that's it okay and then if you want to you know uh, update the data or modify the data just like what we did last time i have a code over here but this apparently is not working okay there was some there are some data distortion issues i'll explain i just explain what's going on i'm not able to explain as to why it is happening but i'm not, uh, but i noticed there is some data distortion so uh, i'll just comment this out I'll, I'll show you guys how this works later in just in, in some pay, some time okay I'll just let me just comment this out okay okay now if I were to uh, okay let me before that uh, before we write something uh, let me just you know comment this out too okay um, format comment this out yeah 
as of now let's uh, see how this writing has been done so compile okay just says that there are unused variables but nothing nothing to worry just compile build just warnings okay execute this uh, let me bring this within the screen um, okay shit damn it okay let me bring this within the screen okay so there are like uh, let's give me okay i'll give two entries first entry will be have a roll number 10 okay roll number 5 okay just my name okay two grades like five uh, five okay that's not a problem and then i give another value 10 and then i'll just write my brother's name ram okay just two values 10 then that's it okay now if i were to open this file okay student drag uh, apparently something is not right okay if i were to open this um, it should it should have written this nicely but if okay this is the file over here I get something like this it shows something like mine uh, there are some opening issues and closing issues of that sort I'll have to verify this let me do this thing again let me close genie click and then open this up again okay compile build and run this compile build and run this let me say uh, Oh, okay, two entries. Um, right. Ah, shit. Um, messed. I think I messed it up over there. Fine. Compile build. Uh, compile build and run this. Okay, the number of entries is two. First row number is five. I don't know, just like that. Five. Okay, two values and then next entry. Uh, D is like that. Eight, nine. Okay, this looks fine. If I were to open this, surprisingly, uh, even with this, something is not right. Okay, something is not right. And uh, you know, I'm just get, I'm just getting this file being corrupted again often. Not sure why. Well, let's. Not sure why, but. Uh, uh, if you guys notice as to why this happens or if you guys are able to find an answer for this do, do let me know i am kind of you know get and kind of you know, you know breaking my head on this part which i'm not able to explain as of now okay and now this is being done this part is trust me this works okay now what i do what i do is that let me just take comment this part of the code let me just uncomment this part of the code okay format uncomment lines okay and yeah okay if I were to compile okay compile build and execute this let me add two entries nothing much two entries okay that's roll number right five I run five five and then ten ram ten ten okay it shows that the file uh, writing is done reading it read, it read out fine and then it says that everything is going well okay if i were to open this up open this file right now still something is not right okay what i'm having is that for some reason i'm not able to um, so for some reason uh, i'm getting my file like this I'm getting my file like this something is not right and you know I'm getting I'm getting file like this I'm not able to explain as to why it is whether it's some kind of data corruption I'm not sure but this is how it is but on the other hand if maybe if large number of data were added to it I think this form this issue may not turn up okay let's look at that a little later and then what I'm going to do is that let me let me you know inc include this part of this program and show you the same if I were to uncomment these lines 
uh, don't come in these lines what these lines do is that uh, in the top first part of it we are just writing a program we are just uh, writing the data to the file in the second part of the program we are searching for a data okay in this third part of the program which starts from here we we finish the search and then we will be tr we are trying to modify one of the data sets okay and then how we open the file over here row number 5 is what we are going to modify the file is opened over here okay and then the file is directly read in one line one line in this statement and then we are checking this again to make sure that these are same okay and these are same I said f equals 1 and then I get the roll number student name and the grades from the user write this in the keyword so write this uh, you know write this and then uh, using the right keyword and then I'm printing the print I'm reprinting them okay so that being said that being said if I were to compile this it's still showing an error okay let me use the you know format 20 this is not this is nothing just a small space three space between these two that's it okay compile this build this and run this okay this time let me give a larger data set let me say five entries and then mm, okay let me enter <coughs> roll number one and that will be my name okay let's let's set two arbitrary values like that and then let's say roll number two and this be my brother's name two values okay let this be roll number five okay this let me be my father's short name and then five two values like that and then th let this roll number be 10 and this be my mother's name my mother's maiden name and then two grades 10 and 10 okay and then finally th let this roll number be 20 differentiate well differentiated from the others uh, let this name be my aunt's name prema and then two values 2020 okay now what it does is that read the file return it and it's open and it has you know uh, displayed the value display the data set for uh, name equals 10 I mean roll number equals 10 okay and it's waiting for me to enter the data and when, when once I entered all the data it is going to write them on the screen I mean write them on the file before that I just open this file I'll show you guys how this looks like still there are issues but if you guys notice there is a small uh, there's a small difference see my name the data corresponding to my name the data corresponding to my brother okay the data corresponding to my father's name the my mother's name and my uh, aunt's name so if you guys notice one two three four five all these five data all these five data are written but still you have a lot of these backslash double zero kind of uh, kind of uh, character encoding so it's some kind of uh, issue which is not able to you know, rectify not sure why if I were to, but on the other hand let me let me just see if I can open this in genie okay still it's not able to open but something is happening okay now if I were to you know change this I'm going this with now I'm uh, since I've set R to be five. This I'm going to change my change the third entry, which is actually the entry wherein I gave my father's name. Okay, so let this be five instead of five. Let me this be fifty one, and then I write my father father's full name. Gonna say Karan. Okay, and then ent new entry fifty one fifty one. Okay, and it says the data has been modified because it's written. And let me it's fine. Okay. Let me just open this file right now. Okay, still the same issue. Still the same issue. But if you guys notice, this data, these data, this data, this data are all same. The data which I which I wanted to modify, it's not of it. It's the same. Whereas a new data set has been written. Okay. Now this is something. Uh, this way this is something happening but what I'm trying to say here is that though the encoding is not supported kind of a thing it's not supported 
Fortran is able to open it up and use it. The, uh, this I tried to change with the changing the format type record length slightly by modifying tweaking this record length slightly. But the thing is, the data is there, but it looks very incomprehensible kind of a thing. Okay. Now, if you guys are able to e explain me uh, how why this data is being data is being incomprehensible like this to see. Okay, that will be really 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 helpful because I have I've been breaking my head on how to give a proper explanation for this picture. It's not working out nice for me. Okay, if you guys know about this, do, do let me know. I learn from you guys, and that'll be very beneficial for others. And you can just keep this on the comment on the key. Uh, you can just mail me this, or you can just write this uh, explanation if you guys found it on the comment section. That will be very useful, and uh, I'll include. I mean that will be very useful for the, all the others to see as well. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, the uh, with that you know we're closing on the uh, we're closing on the section of direct access files. Okay, and uh, if you and how to update them and stuff. Okay, like updating a file, modify and entering, and uh, updating a file by adding more data and merging files. I recommend you follow the same kind of procedure we used last time. We mentioned the pseudocode we mentioned last time. This for the same as direct access files with a little slight modification as per the need. That's it. And now, with that, with that access files over. And before we close on this tutorial, I'll just want to mention a one small topic called as small topic regarding file trans regarding file processing. There is a keyword called as inquire available in Fortran. Okay. Now what it does is that it just uh, tells us. Uh, tells us the availability of the file, the status of the files opened or clo opened or uh, closed in Fortran. Now, see the the thing is uh, sometimes uh, certain files will be op if in by looking at the program or seeing the program we'll know whether a certain file is opened or not or closed or not whether it's been accessed or not under process or not. Yeah, yeah. The problem, the thing is. Uh, it's, it seems that there might be some situations wherein uh, the file uh, wherein uh, you no, you do not know whether a certain file is available or not. I mean, certain file is available or not. Whether a certain file is under process or not. Whether it's open or not. How? See, let's say you have let's say uh, three to four of three to four people work on some a massive project in Fortran. Let's say. And then uh, let's say uh, you uh, you wanted to access certain data files, okay? And this data file is uh, data files are being simultaneously accessed by somebody else in your in your project, okay? Now what happens is that if if you are the only person working in the project and nobody else is working, then the he will not be, that other person will not be accessing it and you can access it directly, so no issues. What if you're trying to access a file and that person is also accessing a file and this data is like available to all three, four, let's say all, all four of you guys. Then what happens is that sometimes uh, when a data has been accessed by other, you should not be, you know, you should not be allowed to access it for you know, consistency of data sets, consistency of data and to stop overriding conditions and stuff. Okay. Uh, for that kind of a stuff to happen. Uh, what's necessary uh, for that kind of stuff to happen, and to make sure that uh, you have a check to know whether the other program, other program is, other programmer is using it or not, uh, and to check whether some other subroutine, uh, or some other routine were run by other programmers or using the files or not, or something of that sort. Okay, inquire statement is very necessary. To check like that, uh, if you're just a single programmer. This is not at all of use. So this is just a minor condition. So I just don't want to explain. Okay, inquire uh, statement comes in three to four methods. Okay, I just explain you guys the three methods. Now, if you write the inquire statement with this format, with unit, uh, the, the parameters unit, opened, opened, and name, what it does is that, see, if uh, first of all it see it uh, checks whether the file uh, with the unit unit number ten is available or not. If it is available, okay. If it is available, okay. Uh, what it does is that it checks for the file name corresponding to the unit number, and then that file name is passed as a string to this keyword file underscore name, okay. And now, and next, let now the the file being present, the file being present, okay. It will check whether the file is opened or not. If the file is opened. 
it sets this command it this is this uh, variable op underscore status to be true if the file is not opened it, it says this op underscore status to be false okay and then this is one method and then here you have another method wherein uh, here you give the file name in the form of unit number here you give the file name in the form of in the in its direct name so what you do is that inquire give the name to be the file name in string as a string okay and then what what it does is that if this file is present if this file is present okay it says this present to be true meaning if the file is existing or not if the file is existing okay it means it's present so this present will be set set to true and if this is true okay uh, what it will do is that it will say it'll, uh, set p to be the corresponding uh, unit number for that file okay uh, this is exactly the other way around here you give the unit number to get the file name here you give the file name to get the unit number and to check whether it's present or not and once these are pr once these two are pr when it's the file is present at the same time it's unit number is given i will check whether the file is opened or not if it's open it sets the op underscore status to be true if it's not open it sets op underscore status to be false simple as that okay and then there is this one more way wherein there is one more way wherein you give unit to be file name and then access to be access underscore type and record to be length what it does is that it checks whether this file whether this file name whether this file is available or not if it is available if it is available what it does is that it sets access underscore type to be the data type of the file it says whether the data, that file is a normal file or da, whether it's it says whether the file is a normal file or a, I mean, it just it say the access underscore type will have a string which says whether the file is a direct file or a sequential file, and recall uh, I mean the length uh, uh, variable over here uh, has the stores the value of the la length of the data set. Okay, here the other specifiers can also be used that we used on the top for get to get other accessory information. Mm. And this is not all. This is not much. This is not of much importance, but it's just simple. It just ha you just guys can have a look, and that's it. Okay, not not much of a big deal. Okay, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorials. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at an imp uh, interesting concept. We'll be looking at you know pointed data types and their application and their small applications in Fortran, and uh, and and let's see how that goes. That's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. So take care then. Bye.